Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time on the GSMC Sports Network. So, hope you guys are having a great week. Today is Wednesday, or like my mom like to always call it, hump day. Come on, guys. Don't think like that. Don't get too excited. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, no, um, you know, you're trying to get over that hump, and then now you got to look down toward his... Uh, um, third, a successful Thursday and Friday. So here to get you along the way, here to get us through a week, you know, but, you know, we have a great week of wrestling tonight. We have AEW Dynamite. And on Friday, of course, always SmackDown. And Saturday, we have SummerSlam. So a lot of cool things to look forward to as a wrestling fan, to be honest. Um, so you can't really complain too much. Thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a, we have a great show for you today on tap. We have our WWE NXT Great American Bash uh, a week one preview. We also have our, e, our AEW Dynamite re, um, preview, our Great American Bash review, or sorry, our um, AEW Dynamite preview. And then we're going to talk about um, in recent news. It's been um, you know it's been said that Wembley Stadium holds a, more of a capacity crowd as opposed to Cleveland Brown Stadium. So there's a lot of speculations going around, people saying that um, All In is going to be bigger than WWE SummerSlam. So we're going to talk about a little bit, maybe debate a little bit, kind of get into the matches and stuff like that. And I want to hear you guys' opinions. You know, of course, I always just share mine. You know what I mean? Like, you guys are dying to hear whatever I have to say every 8 p.m. Pacific time, 11 p.m. Eastern time. I'm just babbling, babbling on about professional wrestling. But, hey, you know, you guys always have that tips and donations link. You'd always send that chat. Uh, you know, nevertheless, we're family. We're wrestling family a thousand and ten percent. And then we're going to move on to segment four. We're going to talk about my most memorable um, SummerSlam moments. Totally, you know, totally biased, obviously subjective as hell. So, you know, uh, if you have a favorite SummerSlam moment, make sure you hit me up in the chat. In our fifth and final segment, like we do every Wednesday, we end it off with our weekly, our Wednesday's weekly wrestling news. So a lot of fun uh, just ahead of you guys. But before we move on any further, I'm going to remind you guys to hit up that tips and donations link. Hit up that chat. I want to hear you guys' beautiful voices. I want to hear you guys' takes in terms of professional wrestling. Remember to Superman punch that like a subscribe button to the show. Also follow the show, follow the GSMC Sports Network for, for awesome content, for more sports and podcast and stuff like that it's pretty dope over here be a part of this gsmc sports bloodline here at the gsmc sports network we do love a lot of peace love and positivity a thousand and ten percent so don't be too shy to hit up that chat give me a shout out where you're listening from and yeah let's talk about some good old-fashioned wrestling once again the link is at the gsmc podcast.net all right, so we got a segment one. We're going to talk about NXT's Great American Bash Week One, and um, yeah, we got off to a hot start. Obviously, you saw the the host, you saw Hank Tank, you know, with a little, you know, with a kooky entrance. I got to be honest, with the nice little intro kind of gave me, uh, you know, kind of gave me like uh, I don't want to say like Attitude Era vibes and, and you know, Attitude Era meeting up with the new day and age of professional wrestling, a little family friendly, you know, somewhere where you can take the kids. And watch wrestling uh, along with your um, with your beautiful children, which is something that WWE definitely is a um, is a marksman for. So you know, definitely love the intro. So we're gonna start off. We have the WWE Women's World Champions retaining their titles, Alba Fire and also Isla Dawn, uh, the Unholy Union, or I think they like to call themselves. But they defeated Last Legend and Miss Jackson of Metaphor, and overall, I thought they were pretty damn impressive. I thought overall, like they did really, really well, able to establish themselves in the ring as tag team, uh, tag team competitors. Uh, obviously, in the beginning, excuse me. Obviously, in the beginning of the match, you saw Last Legend, you know, kind of took it out, thrown into the steel steps. So you know, you kind of saw them fight their way up. It was, you know, it, it's not like it wasn't like you know, like a landslide win. But in reality, we all know why they are the WWE World Women's Tag Team Champions. They have they have a gauntlet to go through. Next, they have to face Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. And then in the future, Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. So if it's, uh, you know, WWE wants to make Alba Fire and Isla Dawn look absolutely amazing, look, making them look like they were, um, you know, the perfect tag team, which I believe they are. I believe I believe they are a thousand and ten percent. My number one rule for men's wrestling is I hate it when two single superstars come together to fight for tag team titles. I feel like if you're a tag team, you should stay in the tag team division. 
Um, you know, you should highlight the tag team division. With that being said, in the women's division, of course, you have Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. Then you have Katana Chance and Caden Carter. You also have Damage Control. And, uh, you know, you have uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. So in the future, I bet there is going to be a lot more... Um, a lot more women's wrestling on the verge in terms of professional wrestling in the WWE side because they are in the works for the Intercontinental and also the Women's United States Championship. So, you know, you're going to see a mid-card title belt and are you going to see a main card? And once again, you're going to see the, the women's tag team, uh, you know, championships being defended and stuff like that. So it should be pretty badass. Last Legend and uh, Miss Jackson shouldn't hang their head too low. I thought they did very, very well. After the match, you saw Ethan Page come out, of course, you know, just building up toward what's going to happen tomorrow or uh oral uh, mensa pin ethan page once again for the third time then you saw brooks jensen take on cedric alexander happy to see cedric alexander i gotta be honest with the whole bobby lashley uh news and stuff like that and then shelton benjamin there's a lot of speculations saying that aew is gonna have a uh, version of the hurt business i have no idea if they're gonna you know take that name well, i think it is coined and uh uh, copyrighted by WWE, but I think it's stupid. I think WWE should just kind of let them have it. I think more or less if they don't let them have the Hurt Business title name, it's just petty. It's just nonsense. It's just petty crap. It just shows that WWE holding on to this grudge, being like, if you make it outside the WWE, you're not going to be successful. You can't use our names. And in reality, like, you know, who gives a damn? And I think under the Paul Levesque era, I'm pretty sure, um, you know, Triple H is going to have no problem having MVP. Um, Sean Benjamin and uh, you know, Bobby Lashley leave on good terms. Her business maybe makes a comeback to WWE within uh, you know, a couple of years or something like that. But right now, it seems like they are actually uh, you know, heading out. So, you saw Brooks Jensen lose, uh, Cedric Alexander. You saw that move by Brooks Jensen as he did a um, a somersault from the apron onto the announce table, and he completely sh looked like he shattered his ankle. Um, and then you saw Cedric Alexander roll him in, hit the move, and then um, hit his finishing move, and they got the one, two, three. So, you know, I I think there was a little bit of an injury right there. Obviously, Sean Spears was, um, you know, ringside to his chagrin. You saw Brooks Jensen get the loss. Brooks Jensen not really taking his uh, singles run, I guess, that seriously, I guess you can say. But overall, you saw Cedric Alexander being super impressive, and um, I was happy he picked up the dub. Next, we see Tony D'Angelo retaining his Heritage Cup championship against Tavion Heights in the fifth round. It was um, it was a good match. You know, obviously there was the first, um, you know, two rounds, no decision. And then, you you know, round three, you saw uh, the Tony D'Angelo round four. You saw a uh, resuperated uh, Tavion Heights with the pump up speech from Ren Sinclair of, you know, looking from the outside in in terms of being a part of the no quarter catch crew. I thought Tavion was going to do it. I thought Tavion was going to do it. I was kind of hoping, you know, I still think that uh, Tony D'Angelo is still in the main event, you know, picture in terms of WWE NXT. So, you know, the Heritage Cup, I feel like would do wonders for the no quarter catch crew. Obviously, sorry, there's something like itching my back. Obviously, you see them, um, you know, Charlie Dempsey, Osborne, Heights. You see them on, you know, different uh, shows, obviously on TNA and stuff like that. So just kind of having something like that, like the Heritage Cup that you can defend from uh, promotion to promotion. I think it'd be pretty cool. Honestly, like if you see the Don and TNA, he, you know, he would he would look so out of place. But that's in my opinion. I think, you know, watching the D'Angelo family walk out of, uh, you know, uh, NXT to defend their Heritage Cup um, championship at uh, Impact Wrestling, it would just, I don't know, it just doesn't really look like it fits. But Charlie Dempsey, Tebion Heights, uh, Osborne, it would be amazing. So, you know, definitely think that's going to happen in the future sometime, some way. Then you saw a promo with my man, young OG Javon Evans, telling that, um, telling the crowd, telling the viewers and the listeners that, um, he used to tell his teachers to suck it, you know, the DX chop. I love that. I think that's totally badass. If you're going to school tomorrow and if you have a teacher, I'm just kidding. No, don't do that. Do not do that. I do not condone those actions. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I thought it was kind of cool. Just spoken from a true wrestling fan. Talked about how when his parents got divorced, it was a really, really hard time. So when in doubt, what's the best thing to do is try to find try to find something to distract you from all the depression and stuff like that. Because it's not easy. It's not easy when, you know, parents get divorced and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, Javon Evans did what he had to do to become 
you know, kind of at peace with himself. He found the passion that he loved, ultimately led up to his career. Obviously, 1,010% impressive. Jamon Evans is the future of WWE NXT. He was literally just three seconds away from, uh, you know, winning the NXT World Heavyweight Championship. So I thought that was pretty cool. He said he used to borrow his neighbor's trampoline to practice wrestling moves and stuff like that. Just, you know, a wrestling fan, a wrestling fan, GoPro. Kind of, you know, like kind of like what you see with Bailey, like we see with, you know, Sean, my basically everybody who becomes a professional wrestler. Obviously, you know, it's, you know, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree and it's not really rocket science. It's like something obvious as hell. If you become a fan of something, obviously you want to mimic, you want to, you know, you want to emulate what you see on the television and stuff like that. So then him, he was like, you know what, I, sometimes I feel like I'd be, uh, you know, Jeff Hardy with my friends, you know, wrestling and uh, in the schoolyard and stuff like that. So definitely love that. Next, we see Joe Hendry. Joe Hendry's amazing concert. It was pretty badass, I got to be honest. It was pretty cool to see Joe Hendry go out there uh, in the NXT universe, in the WWE universe, and just show that he, he's he got the juice, and he's a dog, man. He's a dog. Obviously, he was attacked by Gallus, and Gallus does, you know, Joe Kofi, he does not want Joe Hendry in the WWE NXT. Still a little animosity between the, you know, between the Irish or Scotsman. So... Um, Gallus is set to take on uh, Joe Kofi of Gallus is set to take on uh, Joe Hendry um, next week, week two of uh, NXT Great American Bash. So then you have the contract signing to Ethan Page and Oral Mensa. I, you know, I love Ethan Page and I love what he's doing on NXT, but I don't know. He just seems like he's, I don't know. He just seems like he's not really in the limelight like I kind of thought he was going to be, and I'm not sure if that makes any sense. But, you know, if you take the title away from someone as big, someone as, you know, enthusiastic and charismatic and loved, like Trick Williams, I think you got to go out there and you got to be more of a, you know, you got to be more of a champion, I feel like. That's the reason why I feel i felt like i couldn't put him on my uh top 10 power rankings yesterday is uh ethan page i you know i think him fighting someone like oro mensa i know you know once when ethan became a part of the nxt roster he attacked oro mensa and also noam dar uh which should be interesting to see if noam dar makes a return uh, uh next week um so it's it's not ideal for a main event NXT World Championship match, but I guess it's going to do. Oro Mensa has been nothing but spectacular, proving himself within the last couple of weeks. Beforehand, he was kind of like that member of Metaphor, kind of just like soft-spoken in the corner, but knew that he could have, uh, and knew the uh, the the stable could have lived up to so much of, of a potential. And, you know, just kind of settling for the, the scraps and stuff like that. You know, I got to be honest, ever since, um, you know, you've kind of saw Noam Dar leave Metaphor, obviously due to injury. You've seen Aura Mensa step up. You see Last Legend. She tried to compete for the NXT Women's North American Championship. Then you see her tag team with uh, Miss Jackson uh, for the WWE World Women's Tag Team titles. So it should be interesting to see what that stable does, go, you know, moving forward. But, you know, should be interesting to see what the match uh, next week on Great American Bash Week 2. Speeding this up, running out of time, we had... Um, uh, Kendall Gray, uh, alongside with Carly Bright, uh, going against Jada Parker. Jada Parker got the victory. Kind of cool, but you saw my I was born. Come out with Gwen Sinclair for the distraction on Kendall. That's how Jada Parker was able, able to pick up the victory. Then, you know, something that I kind of thought was going to happen. Fallon Henry, uh, Jasmine Nix, and JC Jane defeat Soruka, Lola Vice, and Carmen Petrovich. It, it, it was about time that these girls got a victory. You know, uh, you know they're... Such the the the, the bad the bad girls of WWE NXT, and lately they've been on a on a huge loss kick. But uh, you know it, it's kind of cool. I you know definitely love that. Uh, so you know Fallon Henry, Jasmine X, Jason Jane get back into the win column. Uh, week one of NXT Great American Bash, and then we have the main event. The main event: Roxanne Perez defending her WWE NXT Women's World Heavyweight Championship against Chase Eustia Hill. It, it was pretty dope. I got to be honest, it was a great match. A lot of, you know, different submissions, a lot of counters. You know, you definitely, you know, you basically saw the same wrestler go head to head. And, you know, I, and I know I know that might come off a little weird, um, but both of them are relatively the same size. They relatively, relatively have to rely on their elusiveness 
their uh, tactical wrestling, also their technique and strategy to pick up the win for a, for them uh, to win a ch- uh, match, let alone a championship match. But it was great. Overall, it was entertaining. They got a uh, they got a this is awesome from the crowd. I thought it was a thousand and ten percent awesome. I loved how Rich Holland tried to tap into Thea Hill's you know inner badass and be like, you got to do whatever it takes to win. And that's something she needed to hear, obviously. And it's something that I kind of mentioned yesterday is Rich Holland going to do or say anything that's going to mess up his chances with when staying in uh, Chase U. But Thea Hell, she's going to be back. She's going to be back. She's still super young, much like Roxanne Perez, but Roxanne Perez, Pop Rocks, for the win, the one, two, three, retained. And still, WWE NXT World Women's Champion, Roxanne, the prodigy, Perez. All right, guys. So next, we're going to talk about AEW Dynamite. It is live tonight. Can't wait to see it. I have it on record right now. I have not checked Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, nothing of that sort. So I want to be completely surprised. So yeah, let's talk about some AEW Dynamite when we come back. 